that you get to hear from other people besides myself. So I have two special guests today. I have Chelsea Owens and Aza Funches, and they're gonna share their stories on today mm -hmm. as well as their experiences. And I think that we can all relate. Maybe you can have a breakthrough. So that's what we're doing today, just kind of sharing a lot, right? So I wanna first start with the wine of today. As you all know, I love red wine. So this is another red wine. And it is uh, also black owned. It's Charles Woodson, who is a former NFL player. And this is called Intercept, and this is a Cabernet. And I really, really enjoy it, so I hope you all can get a, a bottle and try it as well for the red wine lovers. <laughs> all right? So the topic today, we're talking about how being in a single-parent home versus a two-parent home can be effective in our lives, right? It can be effective in how we raise our children. It can be effective in how we choose our careers and our personal life, who we choose to date, even uh, like so much more, right? So, I'm super excited about it. I hope y'all can enjoy, relate to it. We all got daddies, we all got mamas, right? So, everybody can relate to this, whether you're in a two-parent home or a single-parent home. So, we're just going to have an open dialogue about it. So, let's talk about it. All right. So, I'm going to introduce my cousin, <laughs> We are from the same hometown, by the way. So, we are from Prentice, Mississippi, okay? Yeah. I think I'm the only one to talk like this, but uh, we are from Prentice. All right. So, this is Chelsea. I'm going to let Chelsea introduce herself. Hey everybody, I'm Chelsea. Um, me and Marissa are cousins, um, but we're also classmates too. So just an uh, introduction about myself. So I did grow up in a two-parent home. My parents were married 25 plus years up until my dad passed away in 2016. Uh, me and my sisters were, you know, definitely affected by it, but we take what we learned and what we saw within our household into our daily lives now. Yeah. So I'm super excited about talking about this topic. Okay, all right, Miss Aza, what's up? Um, hi, I'm Aza. Um, I come from a single parent home, just raised by my mom, April. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna just tell y'all the real of what she gave me because it was always uncut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we need that, right? All right, so statistics say, um, and also research says, uh, that. Being raised in a single-parent home and a two-parent home can have pros and cons on both sides, right? So when you're in a single-parent home, you only have that one parent, so your bond is, like, strong. You work as a team. You have to work together because you only have those two. Well, some people feel that if you're raised in two-parent homes, um, you end up being this, you know, so much more successful. You end up uh, having the best, you know, marriages. Everything is better with two-parent homes. And, and that's, you know, very well could be true. For some people, it is true. But for some of us, being in a single-parent home was just as good. We had to find what makes it work. What's the positive, you know? So, as you know, I was in, I'm a single-parent child. You know, my mom, Loretta Johnson, as you all know, that's the whole background of this um, business that I have when it comes to L.B. Johnson Therapeutics, it's, you know, in honor of her. She passed in January. So, um, I was raised by her. Me and my brother and my sister. My sister is 16 years older than me. So it was really just my brother and my mom. And we didn't have any support. I didn't have a male figure around. Uh, my dad is in my life was not as heavy as I would like it to be when I was younger. And if you look back at my past, it's on Amazon. It's on like social media. I wrote in a book called Breathe. And I talked about how I found out who my dad was when I was 12 and how that affected me. So being in a single parent home, you know, we don't have much. We don't have many funds. We don't have um, much support. My mom had to work 24-7. So that means that she wasn't there the way that I would want her to be there. But we knew had to work as a team. So when she's at work, I cooked. I cleaned. I did the yard. I did this. So when she come home, she pay bills to go to bed. So we had to work as a team effort, right? So with me saying that, I want to know from Chelsea, how was it in a two-parent home with that? Um, I would say... Just growing up and now that I'm older, um, I look back and I see there was a huge difference in the way I had 
family and friends who grew up in single parent home versus mm -hmm. what I saw in my own household, which were my parents were together. Mm -hmm. And just the way that they worked as a team and raising us versus I saw a lot of my friends and even you, yeah. you actually grew up, I guess you could say faster because mm -hmm. you had to mm -hmm. almost in it's some fun. form become an adult because you grew up in a single parent home where most of the time they were working. Mm -hmm. They were trying to provide for you where, versus us, our parents allowed us to be kids a lot right. more. So right. we had two people to right. answer to versus y'all like... You kind of had to be in that adult position, mm -hmm. which I hate for a lot of people that I know had to do that. You know, right. With, excuse me, within their life. True. Um, I also noticed, like, I look at relationships a lot differently. Mm -hmm. um, see that? I see, see that. me personally, like, if I have kids, I want to be married. I want to be in a relationship right. with someone. Right. Um, I want to have a partner where we can go through life together. Um, I also see the difference in word. I wouldn't say like, I noticed that some people say like, if you grew up in a two parent home that you're a lot more successful. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of friends that I know mm -hmm. who are pretty successful now who grew up in one parent mm -hmm. homes, exactly. but I think it just depends on your environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you the person. And you the your person. Job. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now what I was going to say about that is, you know, uh, it's like, uh, I always hear this story about the, the two, yeah, they're twins and their brother their dad was a drunk one of them ended up being a drunk the other one ended up not being mm -hmm. a drunk so it's all about what your mindset is what, what do you want to overcome you know what do you want to do with your life do you want to stay in the environment um if it's negative you want to stay in the environment or do you want to grow out and also bring your family with you mm -hmm. so that's something like you carrying them with you you breaking the curses and chains and that's what that was what my drive was that was my motivation Mm -hmm. So I can truly say that that that's true what you said. What about you guys? You're a single parent, right? Yes. Um, I would like to piggyback off what Chelsea said. We definitely had to grow up faster. Mm -hmm. um, true. My mama. True. <laughs> I was washing dishes and everything. First grade. Like, it wasn't no way <laughs> to play I had to, you know. Yeah. And, um, like, I can just tell the difference, honestly, with, like, when she did get married. And yeah. when she had my sister, it was, like, mm -hmm. totally different from her upbringing. Mm -hmm. um, my sister, she was very lenient with her. Like, mm -hmm. she didn't have yeah. to do all these things. And I feel like now that she's older, she's feeling like, oh, I should have made her do these stuff, like, what mm -hmm. I had you doing. Yeah. But as um, far as me, um, I guess I just, I appreciate her mm -hmm. for um, just keep staying on me. Because yeah. she had to. Um, my dad, he was literally 45 minutes away, yeah. and I rarely saw him. Um, great guy, don't get me wrong, great guy. But father-wise, I wouldn't say he was, you know, just the best. Yeah, yeah, that and makes I sense. think, you know, everybody go through that, so. I agree, I went through that as well, and my dad, Hers was 45 minutes away, mine was like five minutes up the road. No <laughs> lie, my dad lived five minutes up the road. It's not me, funny, but literally... it's like, that's crazy. Right, yeah. and we live in a small town, yeah, so right. I literally saw my mm -hmm. daddy at the gas station hanging out every day when I was on my way to vote ticket school, Monday through Friday. Didn't see him at my house, but saw him on the streets. He ain't no bad person, by the way. He drove trucks, but he was on, like, hanging out with his friends at the mm -hmm. store. And that's why I see my dad, and I be out the window. Hey, Dad! You know, and then everybody laughed at me on the bus. But they knew when I saw my daddy, I'm going to speak. You know what I'm saying? So, I agree with that. I, I understand what you're saying. Um, and I I feel like this is good because I'm a single parent. My mom didn't get married at all again. She didn't, actually didn't have a boyfriend that I can remember. It was just me, her, and my brother, honestly. Mm -hmm. And her mom and dad was married until he uh, passed away. And your mom was single, but then got remarried. So everybody got different transitions. Mm -hmm. And that's crazy. So did your sister, was she raised differently because your mom was married? Re like she got married to her dad? I just think because her dad was more involved. Mm -hmm. I feel like that is the that reason good. of why mm -hmm. he, of why she was maybe raised different. Mm -hmm. um, as far as financially, she had that help. It's... If I need some, it's my problem. My mm -hmm. mama, nobody else. Like um, my grandparents, of course, help. My aunties help, but it uh, it all like originally falls on my yeah. mom. It's, mm -hmm. it's her responsibility to take care of me. Um, mm -hmm. My dad got seventeen other kids. I am nine. Seventeen. I am number nine oh, out of seventeen kids. This is no lie. You work hard. You can look us up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm number nine out of seventeen kids. So. 
Do you think that affected you? Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Like in the way of like, yes, yes, yes. Okay. So many kids. It definitely affects me because for me to have 17 siblings, I don't have a connection with 17 siblings. Mm -hmm. I have a connection with two. Um, I feel like I raised these two just because of the fact they were closer to me. Yeah. And I never wanted them to feel how I felt growing up. Mm -hmm. So I would always get them and let them come with me to go visit my grandpa. Like, my dad's family was very involved but it was just kind of him in a sense mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. but i just always try to make sure that my siblings didn't feel how i felt because i hated yeah. the way i felt so you know if any way i could take that off of them i tried to so that's, that's what's up you taking a big responsibility mm -hmm. there i can honestly say that um I guess my thing is, you know, we, we do have to grow up as single parent, you know. Mm -hmm. Even I think sometimes sometimes both parents, like two parent home, you have to kinda of grow up a little fast because of the demands they have on your life mm -hmm. or the um different. Yeah, like I have, you know, I no lie I have clients where their parents have like these I expect you to be here. I expect you to be here. You need you at a higher at a higher level. You know what I'm saying? I have you at this like, you know, top thing, like you need to be there. <laughs> so I can see that sometimes they have to grow up fast because they have to do so much to get their approval. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to do that. Then you know that I didn't have to get my mom's approval. It's just like, girl, we be making it. Me and you and your brother gonna do what we gotta do, and we gonna work as a team. And you know, I started working at fifteen at the grocery store. No, actually, I started working at fifteen on side of the road picking up trash. Literally, <laughs> you know me. You gonna know I did that. Like mm -hmm. I was literally during the summer mm -hmm. pick up trash on the side of the road. That was mm -hmm. my first, my very first job. And my mom got me that job. And mm -hmm. I don't take it for granted. I ain't. I'm not embarrassed or nothing. Mm -hmm. Like I'm like, I gotta get how I live. You mm -hmm. know, still come home, clean up. You know, get the yard. I was mowing the yard. My mom got a big yard. Like she mm -hmm. got land, land, and I'm out there mowing. My brother, you know. He was far, so he in the house and I'm born, you know, whatever. <laughs> but God rest his soul, he did what he wanted to do. <laughs> you know my brother, he was just, he did what he wanted to do. Yeah. However, though, my dad wasn't there. And um, I am a, I don't know about you, I know you not, but I'm an outside child. My dad was married when I was yes. conceived. And I think that kind of made it even worse when it came to him maybe wanting to spend time, maybe wanting to be there because he had a whole family he was dedicated to. You know, he stepped out and did his thing. And I, I don't hate my daddy for that. I love my daddy dearly. Literally, he called me the other day and we talked for five minutes, but he, we talked, you know, he tried his best, right? Question for you, Marissa. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have a conversation at the age now of just, you know, you growing up and just basically asking him, like, why weren't you involved in my I, life? Like, did you ever ask him that? No. That's you, Asa? Honestly, I, a hard I question to kind of ask, I think. Like, because yeah. you honestly, you, you may the want the answer, mm -hmm. but when you get that answer, it's like, do you wanted, really right. want it, you know? Mm -hmm. That's true. And then just like what you were saying, when you was an um, outside child, if I feel like this is even worse. My dad got married two days after I was born. Girl, My really? mom is in the oh. hospital, you know what I'm saying? He was really working. Yeah, yeah, he was working. He was working it, you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> so, it's just like... <laughs> You know, that's crazy. Yeah, I, I had asked my dad Chester, but what I did, and I probably should have did it better. Mm -hmm. I wrote in a book about him mm -hmm. without talking to him, and I think that affected him because so many people read the book. So many of my family members, my family members got the book. I think some of my sisters got the book. His his kids that he's like within his web, you know, wedlock thing, they got it. So. I feel like I should have had a conversation with Do him. Do you think you should feel guilty of him finding out about how you wrote about it, being that he wasn't? Technically, in your life, I feel guilty because that's my dad. Like I just got a heart, and I don't mm -hmm. like I don't like people feel bad. I hate that, you know. And I still, mm -hmm. and I, I don't hate my dad to this day for not being there. Like mm -hmm. you not being there, help me be where I need to be. But mm -hmm. when you are there, it count. Like we gonna just yeah. make it work, you know. So that's my dad. So I feel like I should have had a conversation because that's how you address your trauma. That's how mm -hmm. you address whatever your whatever you're dealing with. You have mm -hmm. to go to that person and say something. You have to kind of talk it out. Get whatever your answers are. You need to give them. You know, whatever your questions are. So, I agree with that. I do. And, um, I, one thing about it, I didn't tell y'all. I literally went to this girl's house every other day. She, <laughs> she stayed at my house. But you know what? I was going to bring that point up you too. Like, okay, go ahead. Um, just growing up, like, each of, like, so it's three of us. It's three girls. Um, and just each of us had our own set of, like, friends. And I noticed, like, just looking back that all of our friends constantly stayed at our house. Mm -hmm. And I always was like, y'all ain't got your own house, your own mom and dad. And I realized just looking back, like a lot of them did not come from mm -hmm. two parent, two parent, two parent home, like just that family setting. And 
I think with my family, we were like really big on like bringing our family together, like planning mm -hmm. stuff together. Like for example, every summer my parents um, made it a mission to take us somewhere, whether it right. was to the beach on the Gulf Coast or like. Hell, like the casino, like right? Mostly for them, but, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come to the kids session. But just seeing it, and I'm just like, wow, like you know, I'm glad mm -hmm. both my parents That's were true. in my life, and then they actually had an effect on like our, yeah, our friends. Yeah. Like they actually enjoyed coming over there, and like you know, they were actually calling my mama and my daddy, mama and daddy. I'm like, mm -hmm. what? No, yeah, um, yeah, that's so true. But yeah, it just it saddens me that there's so many broken families yeah. and and it's almost like people don't realize how much it truly affects you as you grow into an adult mm -hmm. that's, that's the type of decision that you make mm -hmm. you know the type of people you actually that, even date so yeah. um yeah it, it does say to me and then you have to think about too like the people that you interact with on a daily on a daily basis you know like if you let's say you get into a relationship with mm -hmm. someone you got to ask them like how was you raised you know What's your yeah, you know you all that background? Yeah, what's your relationship with your parents? Like with your family? Like you literally have to ask all those questions because what they tell you is how they going to treat so you. That's so true. That's yeah. so true. Yeah. And a lot of girls, they say a lot of girls. I don't know. I ain't hit my dad with them. They say a lot of girls go after the men and their dad. Like they go date their dad mm -hmm. or whatnot. But what I I have some friends. This is this is just a twist to it. That's why I say it's always comes to anything. And the twist to it is I have a friend. Her parents were married, but she don't want to be married. She want to have a child, raise it on her own because of what she saw growing up. Mm -hmm. Literally, up, you know, parents can be abusive. They can be verbally, verbally abusive is to me worse than physical because it stays. It's mm -hmm. like something that stick. What you say is going to stick. It's not going to go away. I'm going to always remember that. But your pain, like you hitting me, it's, I'm going to remember that, but I, I heal. You can't heal words that much as you can like a scar. Right. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people that's in two home, two parent home, they, they actually have to go through that. They have to go through seeing mom and dad deal with this and deal with that. And then it affects mm -hmm. how, oh, how am I going to choose my husband? Or am I going to get married? How am I going to raise my kids? Point. What's going to happen? Yeah. You know, and then a single parent people, you know, some of us, you know, you want to be a single parent because you made it. You don't need him. You know, that's how some of us feel. Um, so... Did you ever like what's what's your thing about a relationship? Like, how do you go? What do you look for now? Because um, you have people a would actually be very surprised about me. Granted, my parents were married twenty five plus years, mm -hmm. but for me, marriage is not a goal for me. Like, yeah, that's honestly, I'm I mean, if I get married, yeah, okay. If I don't, I'm still okay with it. Like, right. for me, I'm looking for a partner that I can just do life with. Like, this True. Kind of, that we can yeah. treat each other well. That we compliment each other. Um, even like with me growing up in two parent home, my parents, I guess you could say were traditional, like mm -hmm. both my parents worked, mm -hmm. yeah. but when my daddy came home at night, my mm -hmm. mom cooked a full meal every single day. Only yes, time she, she yes, cause y'all used to come over there and eat all the time. So she cooked <laughs> a full <laughs> meal <laughs> every day and she would fix my daddy plate, bring my mm -hmm. daddy plate to, to him. him. And y'all know we don't got so many arguments with me just basically so true, saying, so like, true. I don't feel like I have to be in that traditional form to be a woman to my man. Like, I don't mm -hmm. feel like I have mm -hmm. to, <laughs> feel like I have to, like, fix his plate, cook a meal every day. For one, I'm not going to cook a meal every day. I barely cook for myself. Yeah. Um, but just little things like that, I realize, like, as an adult mm -hmm. and when I eventually get into, like, a, you know, a real relationship with someone Hopefully they don't expect me to be that traditional woman because I'm not. Yeah. They, Even they though I grew up with that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They have to respect that. See how you, you can be yeah. raised a certain way you go a whole other way. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And I'm a pretty fixing plates. <laughs> <laughs> Literally making lunch, dinner, and then yeah. fixing plate and bringing it to him. I ain't seen none of that growing up. That's what we <laughs> so that's crazy. Like you do that now in your, in your relationship. Know. And for me, I saw that every single and day. And you don't want it. And I don't right. want it. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, what about you, Ava? Like, relationship wise? I saw it, like, with my grandma. Like, Grand yeah. my, my grandpa meals, you know, take them to them. That's, that's just what the women do from mm -hmm. back in that time. As um, far as me, like, inter relationship wise, mm -hmm. um, I actually look for the totally opposite of my dad. Um, yeah. Just because of the fact, like, I can't even say the word I want to say. Like, he was a slut. Yeah, you know, he was, <laughs> he was working. He yeah. just out working. there working. You know, Papa mm -hmm. wasn't Rolling Stone. Yeah. So it's just, um, I don't want that. 
Like, mm -hmm. I don't want a person that doesn't feel like I'm enough because he made me feel like I wasn't enough because yeah. he was never there. Yeah. You know? So. Ain't that something? Um, that's I something. just want somebody, like y'all say, to love me a little bit more than what I love them. Mm -hmm. You know? Because I give a lot of love. Yeah. I give mm -hmm. a lot of myself to people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just feel like sometimes if I get it back, I get it back. But if I don't, I don't. And I kind of sit with that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think I sit with it because, like, I done had to sit with my daddy just being like, oh, mm -hmm. I see you, I see you, I don't, I don't. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, that, and that, that's crazy because the research... And my kid, y'all, everybody know I'm a therapist for kids. I'm also a therapist for adults at one of my other jobs, but I'm primarily for kids. And my kids literally have daddy issues. Men, if it's a room full of girls, we're gonna talk about daddy issues. All right, so who got daddy issues today? And we well, and we you. raise our hands and we talk. Do you think that now we put too much on women and say they have daddy issues versus? Men, because technically, men got that. they that's have so some real that's daddy true. issues. That's true. That's I met true. so that's, many men, like true. whether they were friends yeah. or whether I was involved with them. Like they have so many, so much like trauma and like issues, and I'm like, it all comes from the fact like they did the daddy wasn't there, like they and they, it bothers me so much. Right. So either the daddy wasn't there, or I got a client where his dad and his mom are mm -hmm. both medical doctor. His dad is a surgeon. He's black folk. Dad is a surgeon. <laughs> Mama is a, with the family practice and mm -hmm. he has so much pressure on him. It's like he's becoming traumatized. He's like, I don't even mm -hmm. want to do this. Like, I just, I, I'm tired. My daddy wants this. He wants it. You know, he's mm -hmm. brave like this. And it, it's just either way. You know, so I feel like men do have trauma with that. You know, they, they, their daddy wasn't there so they go fine. For, it, for instance, my dad, my brother's dad died. That's the only reason. Because he was there before he died. But he died and my brother started finding love in the streets. Mm -hmm. And that can happen, you know. Your dad not there, so you go into the streets. I'm in a gang. I'm accepted. Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. And then so much turned around for my brother. And now he's he's no longer here for other reasons. But however, however, I can I believe that I believe that. And then what I was going to say, research is about women. Our dad not being there, it makes us feel like you know, do he not love me? Am I not wanted? Uh, my kids say it all the time. Am I not wanted? Why, why my daddy not there? Everybody else there. I go. Here I go, there are my friends, they're in two parent homes and they have dads and mine is not, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it it happens. It's just like, but I wanted to end this with what do you do to resolve the problem? You can't dwell on my dad wasn't here. You know, yeah, he wasn't there, but what are you gonna do to move forward in your life? Are you gonna be the person that, you know, turns around in a negative way? Or are you gonna be positive and like truly do something about it, right? So it, each of us is going to tell you what we did or how we did it. And for me, my dad wasn't there, but I love my dad dearly. I don't hate him for nothing. He knows that I talk to him, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I can truly say that I became a doctor. I didn't go back and be like, you know, I'm going to be, you know, single parent like my mom. I didn't do this, do that. My mom didn't have a degree. She got a GED, by the way. But I'm the first that has a doctorate because of her. You know, I'm driving for my mom. Like, what, you know, hey, you my mom and you done did this for me. Now I'm going to do this for our family. We're going to go for it, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, that's what I decided to do. I decided to be in a relationship with somebody who, he didn't have a dad either. He had a stepdad. His dad died years ago when he was like 15 months. However, he has the family dynamic down, you know, down pat. You know, he had a mom, strong one, just like I did. And we making it work together at the end of the day. We won't get married. We're going to do husband and wife. So we're going to be a two-parent home. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to, you know, we see the things that we didn't want to deal with growing up. And we don't want our kids to deal with that. So we change in the pattern. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing. Are you going to change the pattern? Mm -hmm. Are you going to keep letting it go the way you saw it growing up? Mm -hmm. So those are the things that I decided to do. What about you, Chef? Um, just because I grew up in a two-parent home doesn't mean my parents were perfect. Mm -hmm. um, so you are not your parents. You make your own choices. Mm -hmm. Just make better choices, whatever works for your life. That's what I did. Um, like I said, I grew up in two-parent home. Doesn't mean that I'm going to follow the exact same path that True. they are that they True. follow. I'm my own individual, and that's what I choose to be. Yeah, that's true. What about you, Avery? Definitely my own individual. Um, I just moved different. <laughs> yeah, you moved different, which, yeah. which is fine. I just which moved fine. completely different from what mm -hmm. they moved. Like I'm just um. I try to be more cautious than what they were. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't really even know what to say because I haven't healed from my daddy because mm -hmm. I don't talk to him. So I just can't even answer the question. Mm -hmm. So me and her, we're going to have a session. <laughs> you acknowledge it. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the first step of acknowledging. 
like yes, for real, like I ain't, I ain't even moved from this. Like I still got trauma. Mm -hmm. So we gonna have our own session because mm -hmm. she got to address her trauma at the end of the day. That's the only way to move forward. You got to address your trauma. You can't stay in the same. Mm -hmm. You can't live in that. Then it's gonna continue to come up in the back of your mind. You have flashbacks. Mm -hmm. You gonna have um, these insecurities, whatever. So we're gonna address that. But that's that's you know it's I don't even process. know about y'all, but it's even big for you to address and or admit like. I ain't got past it, man. I, I got some get issues. Past. I got some real issues Should I need to work up. on, you know. So that's what we're doing. So just to give you an idea of what we're doing, we're talking about, you know, two-parent home versus single-parent home, the pros and cons. And I think you all got a lot from it. I hope you did. I did. You know, even listening to them, like everybody's story is different. It's all about how you move forward, you know, as far as that. So I can truly say that I enjoyed y'all tonight. Yes. Thank you, ladies. They so <laughs> sweet. <laughs> Salute, Okay, but anyway, <laughs> y'all got no one tell me to talk about anything. <laughs> but uh, I enjoyed tonight talking about this, and I hope it didn't resonate with y'all. Maybe y'all can look at like, dang, I need to really like identify what my issues are, mm -hmm. address them, move forward. How am I gonna move? Am I gonna be the one that's gonna be the drunk? Am I gonna be the one that's not gonna be the drunk? Which one? Alright, so I love y'all. Thank you, family, for joining in, and I can't wait to see y'all next Wednesday. Again, let's talk about it. Alright, cheers. <laughs>